Welcome everyone this morning to getting started with e-commerce. We have a special guest speaker today joining us to kick off our series of digital marketing webinars today. The session is hosted by the City of Mississauga's Mississauga Business Enterprise Centre. The Mississauga Business Enterprise Center is part of the City of Mississauga's Economic Development Office. We are here to serve you and provide information about small business. Um, we're your central source for resource and guidance. To find out more about how to get in touch with us and what we offer, mississauga.ca slash MBEC is the only URL you have to remember. Head on over there and then there's a link that will take you over to our microsite that has a whole bunch of information about starting and growing your small business. So welcome Sean Stevens and he is an amazing um, CEO at Tree Frog. He has a lot of experience that we thank you for coming. A little bit about Sean is that, wow, you launched in 1997 in the world of the World Wide Web. That's amazing, when dot-coms were plentiful and the rules were changing daily. He immersed himself in the technology of websites and servers, databases, and programming languages. In 2011, Sean moved into his current role as CEO of TreeFrog Inc. Sean's an active speaker and regularly speaks to groups about various subjects relating to internet technologies, Drawing on his diverse techno technical background and knowledge and creativity, Sean puts practical tips and ideas forward to help people learn how to grow their business. Welcome today, Sean Stevens from Tree Frog. This is how you can get in touch with him and also welcome Taylor, who is going to support him with some moderating. Now, so today, thanks, Laura, we, we have so much good stuff for you. Um, we're, we have probably, I'm going to say 10 hours of material that I'm going to try and squeeze into two hours. And, and if I can, we're going to try and squeeze it into, say, an hour and a half so that if there's any questions or we want to go down any rabbit holes, we can. And I will note, I don't want to leave all the questions till the end. So uh, Taylor is actually going to mo uh, monitor all the questions and make sure that I don't miss anything, because honestly, once I get into my zone, I'm just sort of ranting at everybody. I will continue to rant until I don't stop. And you know, we have a lot of people here today. Uh, and so, and all the material that's gonna come at you today, note that because it's being recorded and you can get access to it and you can have access to TreeFrog, you don't have to write anything down if you don't want. You don't have to remember it all. You can come back and get access to it another time. Uh, and now some of you have seen our, uh, the, the material that we've presented before. A lot of it's going to be the same because today we're going to start right at the very, very, very top of e-commerce, the theories, the concepts, and we're going to come all the way down to the bottom. For those of you who can see my magic hands as they move around, this is a, a green screen. I, I have a uh, green hair and I'm wearing green things. And uh, the, the, the problem with obviously wearing all of this green is, is that you appear magically in the background of WebEx. So if you don't mind that, we're going to have some fun today. So just getting started today, you know, there's a promise that was made on the MBEC website, which is, uh, you know, e-commerce is changing. We're going to get to the next level and that I'm going to give you a beginner's crash course on getting started with e-commerce. And listen, I guarantee you that if you stick around for an hour and a half, that by the end of this, if you didn't know how to start and where to get started with the technology, with how e-commerce works and start selling your products today, that I guarantee you by the end of this webinar, you will have that information. And, and the reality is uh, we are, I, I come from an agency and we build websites every day, but I have learned this. If, if you teach a person to fish, uh, you, you, you help people a lot more than if you just build a man a fish. Uh, so today I'm gonna actually give you all the information about everything I know, because we're gonna go through all sorts of stuff, but all the key concepts. And at the end, you'll have everything you need to know what to do next. I promise you that. So today, I've got Taylor and myself. Uh, if you again, like I said, if you have any questions, ask Taylor. I also, and Taylor's going to post this for you in the chat. Uh, we promised today to get you a Google optimization reports. This is a really detailed report. 
It's literally in the, in, I think it's 40 pages or something. And it's going to detail how you're doing with search engines, how you're doing with social media. It's sort of an overall report that's going to show you all sorts of information that you otherwise wouldn't get access to. So if you currently already have a website and today is just about getting some more information, then go to that and we will get you some more. Uh, we also run our own events. Uh, so if you're interested in more events around social media or digital marketing, et cetera, please feel free to go to us. We are an agency. We're actually located, our, our HQ is located in, in Newmarket. So if you see in the background there, you'll see South Lake Hospital. Uh, that, that's where we are. If you're ever in the area when COVID isn't a thing, feel free to pop in. I will note though that we also had an office in Mississauga. I have this great picture of Hazel McCallion. I should have put it in this presentation. Pulling me by the ear, uh, dragging me, I think it was uh, 10 years ago, to start uh, a, a tree frog in Mississauga. So we have a lot of clients that work a lot in Mississauga as well as around the world. Now, today, our agenda. So we've got two hours officially set aside. We're going to talk a, a little bit about tree frog at the beginning. And then we're going to, again, start at that really high level, talk about philosophies of digital marketing, then get into some key steps on building a site, this key concepts. We can talk a little tiny bit about SEO because we're doing two hours on it in a few weeks. Then we're going to go through all the major platforms. Now, at this point, you will understand all the pieces that you need to build a website, all the platforms, the major platforms that are out there, how they all work. Then I'm actually going to walk through a Shopify build. So I, I mean, I'm actually going to do it in presentation style. So it's going to be really easy to understand. And at the end of that, then we're going to talk about Shopify upgrades different things that you could do for Shopify. So I'm picking one platform, which is Shopify, and I'll explain why when we get there. Uh, and then at the end, we're going to have open it up for questions. So anybody who has questions that I didn't cover about concepts or philosophies, then we'll answer them along the way. So listen, just let me know all, all the way through if you have more information. Now, like I promised, I wanted to validate the tree frog and myself. I have, have some cachet here. We, we, have, we can talk intelligently about these technologies and how all the pieces work. Now, we are not a website building company anymore. That's where we started. Actually, in 1997, we started building websites. That was our thing. I've been building websites since the dawn of time. I mean, there's sort of before, before websites and after websites in the world. And listen, I was there at the very beginning. Before websites had pictures, I was there building them. We are now a digital transformation agency. And what that means, just so you guys understand what digital transformation is. So digital transformation is the idea that we're going to, we help people enhance their customer experience and marketing capabilities through website development. We help people design products through software engineering, apps and things like that. We help people, and listen, you can get access to the slide later. I'm not going to just read it off. I'm going to give you the big ideas. We help people with the customer experience to drive better customer experiences. We help people identify competitive advantages in their businesses and, and, and move those forward. We help people with advanced capabilities, things that they can't do on their own, and we help people strengthen their infrastructure. Those are the big ideas. And in fact, how that plays out is in a, in a pretty straightforward uh, map. So this is a digital transformation roadmap. And, and what it looks like is every business starts with an idea. So today there are people in this group that are proto founders, I would call them. You th you're thinking of selling online, but you don't really have a business yet. You might be not have a job. You might have four jobs and you're trying to figure out, you know, how am I going to sort of move my life forward? And then you come up with this crazy idea that you're going to sell something that nobody else is selling or sell it better or do something different. And you become a founder. And then gradually your business grows. You start hiring people to try and cope with some of the problems that you have or things that you don't like to do. And then you sort of grow again and you hire some more people to manage those people, to make those people move forward. And then you start to have different groups of people where you're managing different groups of people around you. And eventually, of course, you mature and you turn into enterprise. And now you have tens of thousands of people that you're monitoring. And what's interesting here is the relationship between the entrepreneur yourself and your technologies and how much you need to know. That all shifts as you make your way through that whole process. Now, what's interesting is, is that all businesses are really mature in some areas and really immature in others. There's a company out there in the group right now who's got this really big, super strong, amazing company, and yet your brand and your website suck. That's great. That's the kind of person that we typically deal with where you come to us and say, look, we're, we're, we, we don't really know how to move online. Help us figure out, help us 
decide what the next steps are. And what we do is we look at the roadmap and we say, look, let's start at the very, very beginning. Let's Let's make sure that we have really, really strong branding, really strong emotional connections with our clients, and we work through that process. Then we have a really strong website that anchors the relationship between that with that brand and all of the relationships that we're developing. Then we want a, an omni-channel strategy, and I'll talk about this today, where we're getting all sorts of different things, and we're getting our relationships and making our sales out to the edges. Then we're going to try and reduce the customer effort, reduce the gap that exists between people. Then we're going to modernize our systems. Then we're going to have more and better technologies that drive things. Then we're going to really focus on really cool experiences and get better insights and things like that. So there is a natural cadence as to the first thing that you should do and then followed by the second. In addition, there's a, there's a natural path here as well. Make sure you're focused on the customer experience first before you start doing cool things then focus on competitive advantage, then do advanced capabilities. And that's sort of our process is we start and say, look, if you have a lousy brand, you're really not going to have a lot of success with your digital marketing. And, and honestly, if, if you have a lousy website, you're not going to be successful with your digital marketing. So if you if you're start thinking about building a website and yet you don't know what you're selling, who you're selling to, how that works, you've got to first struggle with the branding piece and then get build your website, then do digital marketing, then build apps, then close gaps and connect systems together and do other things. So we help people right from the very beginning of that. And we deal with single owner entrepreneurs or large corporation billion dollar websites that we also build as well. Not, not billion dollar website, unfortunately, but billion dollar companies who need websites. But I'd like to do a billion dollar website if anybody wants one. Uh, so we sort of figure out where are the pieces that you lack strength, where are the pieces that you need strength, and then try and align all of those things. And we have processes that we run through that are standard, that make sense, so we're not haphazard about it. We understand what the process is for developing a strong brand, what technologies are most relevant for what person at what time, whether we're building business, business to consumer, like e-commerce, whether we're doing integration with systems, whether we're trying to understand how the people that are coming to buy from you work and how we're going to communicate with them effectively, uh, what the infrastructure needs are, whether you just need some cheap hosting to get you going or whether you need a complex elastic cloud infrastructure to make your website roll forward. So we actually have specialists in all these areas and at the top of all these, at the top of you know, working with everybody here is myself. So I get to deal with small, it's proto founders who are just getting started all the way to CEOs of billion dollar companies and get to just get to play with them on how they're going to move their business forward in every case. So that's tree frog. We do all of these things uh, and we can help you with all of those things. So let's get to it today. I made you this promise that at the end of this recording, you you were going to understand everything that you needed to know in order to build an e-commerce website. And listen, I got to tell you, as I put this together over the last few days, I realized that uh, I was a person who started a business and I deal with people every day that are starting new businesses from scratch and people that have giant businesses that are trying to figure out how do I get online with e-commerce. And honestly, once you learn or hear everything that I have to say today, you are going to really deeply understand. So today, there's been a huge shift in e-commerce. Laura made this point in when, she, when she put out the, the call to everyone to come to this webinar, that in fact, before COVID, there was already a retail apocalypse happening where people were actually moving online with their sales. Before COVID, there was already a fairly significant change in people buying online as opposed to in person. And retail, where department stores, we all know this, they're all closing at an incredible clip. Uh, and, and how many are gonna survive COVID will be a, a, an amazing question. Uh, but other things, which is buying online, electronic shopping, e-commerce was going crazy before anything happened. In fact, before anything happened around this, we were already seeing a lot of incredible things going. Now, uh, this, is, this is really interesting because obviously we know that there's advantages to buying online. It's faster buying for the customers. Customers can easily be reached. There's lower costs. You know, there's all sorts of benefits to buying online. And then COVID. 
So at least one of you out there's lives have been radically affected by COVID. And I would say at least half of you, maybe all of you, have bought something online where you wouldn't have bought something online before, where you have tried buying groceries online, buying clothes online, stuff that you would never have considered before. And now you're considering, you're, you're thinking, well, I don't really want to go into the store just to buy that because I'm putting myself at risk. You know that, and that's why online sales have more than doubled in the last little bit. Before that, we already had what we know, which is businesses closing as a result of us blaming Amazon. And the blame to Amazon that we made was, well, Amazon's going to eat our lunch and they're, they're ruining all the small business of the world. That is just not it. And I want to explain this. So I'm going to talk a few times today about my son. So my son, 12 years old, he decided last year when he was 11 that he wanted to make a million dollars. So he went online to go and figure out how to make a million dollars. Before this, what triggered this was he started selling iced tea out in front of my apartment and he started, he made $80 in one hour and he realized that still wasn't good enough. He wanted to make more money. So he went online to try and figure that out. And what he figured out was that if he went to amazon.com and oh, this is a true story. Uh, and, and he used a, a thing called Jungle Scout. And what Jungle Scout does is it figures out which products are not Prime, not Amazon Prime, so they can't be delivered the next day. They're not actually handled by Prime. Uh, but people are actually selling them online and they have lots of reviews, lots of sales. All you need to do to improve that experience is to provide a product at the same price with better optimization, possibly with a different logo on it. And then, and then make it and ship it to Amazon. So the idea was he would use my credit card to buy products from Alibaba that were clear on Jungle Scout that he could sell, and then used a fulfillment by Amazon FBA to actually ship products directly from China, effectively to the end customer. He would never see the product. He was just using that mechanism. Now, here's the thing: is that Amazon? When I ordered something yesterday from Amazon. It already arrived this morning. Does everybody understand how mental that is? Like, I honestly did not have time to go to the store to go buy it, and yet it arrived at my door this morning. They have completely closed the gap between all the systems, between the outside of us going and buying stuff and the internal operations, they have made that zero. And the whole point of, of this exercise is the faster and the better experience that we can make it for the consumer, for the end person who's buying from us, the more likelihood we are to buy. We are not actually fighting Amazon. We're fighting 11 year old children who figured out how to become micro distributors by buying things and reshipping them through Amazon. And Amazon isn't the thing. Like so the bottom line is you guys can all sign up for Amazon. Uh, I've done this myself. It's not that difficult. A little bit of hassle, but there's Canadian Amazon and American Amazon and you could sell through Amazon starting tomorrow and not have to build anything. Just just sign up for Amazon and start selling your products. So if you have a product, you can start rolling. But let's talk about this. What are your top goals? I actually stole this from I believe it's the Wix website. Or no, the Squarespace website, which is uh, what is it that you want? Do you want to sell products? Do you want to sell services? Do you want to sell memberships? You get the general idea. So, of course, telling you today or talking to you today about e-commerce in general, I could only hit one of you and be completely wrong. Uh, in other words, one of you might be trying to sell service, one of you might be trying to promote your, your not-for-profit, one of you might actually have a physical product like a fork, and you want to sell that fork or as many forks as you possibly can. So today I'm going to talk about the philosophy of how all these pieces fit together, and you get all sorts of different options for online sales, and then we're going to talk about the website itself. So, remembering that there are all sorts of different online sales mechanisms. So, for example, there's e-commerce, which is business to consumer. Which all I want to do is I've got a bunch of products and, and I'm going to say there's two types here. There's, there's I have a box of products here and I'm trying to sell them. Or I have a store and I want to move it online. And that's going to be my focus for today. There's the other option, which is I just want to sell stuff. I just want to market stuff. I don't want to have a product. That's also possible drop shipping, et cetera, we're gonna talk about that. There's also, I wanna sell my services and that's B2B. So now I just wanna sell, now that might be online where I take a credit card or it might not. It might be, I'm just trying to prove, social prove that I am good at something. And then lastly, I might have an entire 
point of sale system, or I might be a distributor and I want to connect all my systems to sell online. And that's a different thing as well. So I can help you with all of those things, but the focus for today is going to be content management systems for e-commerce. Now, let's talk about the big giant philosophy. So this is at the very, very top of everything. There are two, I'm going to say, competing philosophies, not competing, but it's conceptual things that you need to understand before you even dip your toe in the water of e-commerce. The first is that if, and this is sort of the general mentality, is I'm going to build a website, an e-commerce website, and then I'm going to market it as much as I possibly can. And we call it the hub and spoke hypothesis, which is the hub is going to be your website. And then all of the activities around it are all trying to drive back to that central website. So I'm going to write articles, I'm going to get posts, I'm going to do social media stuff, I'm going to do all sorts of marketing and all sorts of other things with the intent of driving back to my website. Now that's hub and spoke. The alternative is the idea of omnichannel. The omnichannel hypothesis is actually it doesn't matter if people come back to my website. E-commerce is still e-commerce if somebody buys something, your product through Kijiji, through Amazon. What if they, what if they buy through somebody else's website? Do you care? Do you want to control the relationship or not? So that, that's a big concept, and, and, I, and I will talk a little bit about today about other e-commerce platforms, but really some, some, the core idea here is, is that if you're going to build an e-commerce website and all the concepts around that, we're going we're gonna to focus on that hub and spoke idea. We want to build the strongest possible relationship with our clients so that they keep buying from us and we control the relationship at every at every step. And, and as a result, what we're going to do is we're going to do all these other activities with, with the SEO and, and et cetera, and push back to the central thing, which is our website. Now, I want to say, and there's all sorts of other people already on the MBEC website, and, and we do this as well, which is digital marketing. And digital marketing is there are core activities to driving people back to your website. And that is SEO and SEM, which we're going to talk about in, uh, I guess, two weeks. Taylor, do you remember when that is? Uh, if you want to post the date of that next thing in the chat so people who are interested in come to the next MBEC webinar, we're going to go really super <laughs> deep into just those things. Then, of course, there's, uh, there's pay-per-click and social media, and then there's content marketing. What's interesting here is these things all support one another. These things all are on top of one another. In other words, if we have strong SEO, that will lessen the price of our AdWords, so we'll pay Google less. If we're doing that and we have great content, that will be something that we can both drive SEO and drive things that we can post through social integration. And that will, of course, drive social pay-per-click. And the whole thing all sort of fits together. So if you just do one thing, just SEO, what you're going to find is you're going to get some success, but not all success. These things need to work in tandem and well together. And so that is why we now call it digital marketing as opposed to SEO. There's another big concept here, and that is, as, as I talked about before, if you just build a website all by itself without any work on who you're going to sell to, what your brand is going to be, and how strong that is, you're going to fail. And the reason for that is, is that people buy from people they know, like, and trust. They buy from websites they know, like, and trust. And so if you have a weak brand and are kind of spraying and praying all over the universe trying to sell forks, you're going to fail because you don't really know exactly who you are and exactly who you're selling to. So back up a minute before you do digital marketing and SEO, make sure you have a really strong web presence, make sure you've got really strong technologies behind you, and be before that, make sure you have a really strong brand. Now, let's go through, and this is again philosophical, so we're going to one, one step down from that big philosophy, we're going to go down to what are the things that you need to know conceptually about website building. Let's talk about the first thing. So the first concept here is, is that the people who are going to come to your website, they're, they're going to be real people. There's not robots. These are actual people. You got to think of them as people. They're going to come by and want to buy whatever it is that you're selling. That makes sense, right? But the fact is you, you can't afford to communicate to every single person in the whole world. Honestly, you just can't. Let's say it costs you a dollar just to get to people in Canada. Well, there's 30 million people in Canada, that will cost you $30 million. You can't afford that. So you kind of got to figure out exactly 
who the people are. And the, the thing here is that there isn't one lever that you pull, there isn't one platform that you can go pay for that will perfectly communicate to all of the different people. Marketing isn't about pulling one giant lever. Marketing is about a whole bunch of little tiny levers pulled in the right order at the right time in the right way in order to get people to go and find you. And that's, that's the basis of it all, which is you've got to figure out of all of the activities that are out there, what are the highest and best value activities? What are the least expensive with them? What's the shortest path to the most amount of money with your marketing dollars? And so in order to do that, you just don't, you know, we've had people come to us and say, you know, we just want to put one ad in the Globe and Mail once. That's not going to work. Come on, everybody out there should know. So you pay $10,000 or $30,000 for an ad in the Globe and Mail. You're not going to, you know, you might get a few sales, but then it's going to die. For that same amount of money, you could do a lot of other smaller activities, which will drive a lot better results. So the first step here is you've got to figure out who you're selling to. And we call that buyer personas or brand personas. There's a whole bunch of different uh, concepts here, but you've got a group people and really define perfectly who is it that you're going to sell to? What are those group looks like? So how are they getting to you? What are they, what information are they looking for? What, what kind of information is going to be relevant to them? What, what's going to scare them off of the, and then make them not want to buy from you? What, what drives their passions? What, why would they come buy from you at all? How much money do they have? You know, you could have the perfect marketing to a group of people who don't have any money. That's not going to lead to a lot of sales for you. And, you know, everybody skips this step. It's fascinating. Everybody jumps to, I want to sell forks. Nobody starts at, who am I going to sell to? Who wants to buy forks? Who has money that wants to buy forks? So this is the thing is you've got to figure out from the very beginning, what are those profiles? What are those personas? What do those characters look like? And start thinking of them as a human being. So, for example, I can, if I, if I want to sell a fork, I might think, okay, well, forks are going to be for people who control the household, who make decisions around aesthetics, uh, who are people that care about feeding their families, uh, who have money. All of you out there instantly went to a group of people in your mind. I, 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 I didn't. I, you, know, you, you, you know your person. You define who that person is, and you could sell forks to them. And I can tell you, I, I, would, I, I still have an Ikea fork sitting beside me. I mean, I'm not the person you sell forks to, really nice forks. Now, once you've figured out that group, and you said, this is the group that I know will buy forks, then you've got to figure out what's the tone, what's the messaging, how, how am I going to make them want to buy? And, and you know what, if, if you feel like we haven't gone into e-commerce yet, that's because this is the important part. The important part is thinking through who's going to come to your website. How are we going to communicate them? How are we going to get them to go through a process of purchasing? How are we going to communicate to them about all the different things they want? And how will we know when we're spending too much or enough money to try and attract those people to come buy from us? And once we can figure out what that is, and we can figure out what the return on ad spend is, if we realize that it costs us $45 to sell a $3 fork, that's not a business. However, if we can figure out that it costs us 10 cents to sell a $3 fork, I can find you an investor. I'll invest in you myself because we can sell a lot of forks for you. Now, this is the thing is once I've figured out what that looks like, and this is all, you know, you, you do research, you do thinking, you, you, you sit down with people who are, like, who are the, the type of buyer that you're going to, and you ask them, what's, gonna, what's the process going to be like as we go through this? And what's going to happen is I'm going to figure out, how do I get started? What was the first step that they take in the journey? They're going to, they, they realize, hey, I need a fork. So they go to Google and they go looking for forks. So maybe they're, they're at their friend's house and they see some really nice forks. And, and so there's a referral process to buy forks. Like, how do people find the process of forks? And then we go through that process and figure out what does that look like? You know, the best way to look at this is if you have a physical business or a house or an apartment that you currently live in, I want you to imagine, and, and very few people do this, I want you to go today, uh, go out to the edge of your driveway and stand there and pretend you're not you, you're somebody else who's approaching your house. Now, whether you like it or not, you have an experience. What, what are the things that you see? Is there garbage there? 
Is the door like off its hinges? Is it is it been painted recently? Is the roof falling off? Like what is the what what do I feel as I'm walking up to your house? Do you do you have a do you have a sense of pride? Do you not have a sense of pride? This is the same thing with a business. So if you saw a picture before, I didn't share it, I shared it earlier. You know, this year as we were renovating our, our property, I really, it really became real real to me that the bushes out in front of my building were horrible. They just they they were they were terrible. So we spent a lot of time and energy this summer to replace all those bushes with circular bushes. I gotta tell you, that was such a pain in the butt, you wouldn't believe it. But that experience of what does it look like to go into that business? So you think about what those personas, what are they thinking when they come to my website, when they see me in digital marketing and they go through awareness, which is just realizing that you exist, proof of existence. And then they go, wait, I'm interested. These guys have something interested I want to sell. And now we communicate to them about why they want to buy something. And then they take action and they want to buy something. And that behavioral cycle becomes the focus of all of our activity. Get them to buy, get them to buy. Now, philosophically, that's not where the relationship ends. And you know what? This is so important. I can't tell you how important this is because so many people screw this up in e-commerce at the very, very beginning. The relationship doesn't end at the sale. The relationship ends when somebody advocates for you for having such a great experience with you. When somebody says, hey, I bought forks from this fork company. My goodness, what a great experience I had. Everybody should buy forks from these people. And I have had so many successful salad eatings with my fork, you wouldn't believe it. Why it's important is, is that that's actually what drives your business, is the success that you've had. It's not the beginning, it's the end. And everybody forgets that. It's not a success until the, a referral has come your way, until the person is unsuccessful, or, a, or an, a, an additional purchase from you. And, and everybody misses this. E-commerce is about the follow through. It's not about the sale. So now that you've got that philosophy and you understand it, let's keep going. I want to give you one example. I actually bought a light, uh, a very, uh, you know, it's like an experiment for tree frog. We have these sort of hanging lights that are made out of cables. Uh, and we're trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to get more lights in this way. It sort of makes a spider of cables and stuff as we were renovating. And at the end, after I bought, there was a video by the company that sold me this, this colorcords.com. And I've never seen this before, which is a video of the families of the people that I'm supporting by buying from them. I gotta tell you, this is genius marketing. I, I am going to buy lights from these people, even when I don't need lights. Like I so, made me so happy to see smiling kids and the happiness that, 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 that my little purchase was causing that group. And, and, and that's just like the beginning of the follow through. That's not the referral and all the stuff that happens afterwards. So before we even get to this, let's, let's install a program. The key here is thinking about what's that architecture? What's the process that people are going through? What's the first page going to look like? What are the second? And, and I want, this is really important that everybody understands. 50% of the people coming to your website don't go in the front door. And in many cases, it's more than that. Somebody finds you on Google, somebody finds you through a social link and they come in the side door. They find a product and they just hit that. In fact, because of the way Google works, you can actually have a, a, a point zero sale. You can have people buy from you that don't even really get to your website. They find you on Google and they click buy and they just, go, they just happen to use you as a credit card mechanism. So whatever that process, whatever that thought process is, you gotta think through how are all these people gonna interact with my website? And how are they interacting? And this is actually the best part of e-commerce, is why companies like us exist, is we will look at the process that people are looking at your website, going through your website, and optimize that, and optimize that, and optimize that. Look, when I'm on this page, I wanna buy this, or I wanna do that, or I wanna do this, and I wanna do that. And, and it's not like you build an e-commerce website and you're done. This is a live thing. This is a puppy. This is, a, this is a thing that you buy, you may get it for free, but it's free as in puppies. Uh, then you have to look after it, you have to inoculate, you have to feed it, you have to love it. You got to, there's all this other stuff that happens. It's not just simply a mechanism that you build and it makes money for you. It's an organic thing. So the process of this architecture process is you now look at what Google, if you've had a website for a while, you look at how the experience is working for them today, 
you you then map out you you sit down on whiteboards and on napkins and you figure out what's the best architecture what's the best process that people are going to use to go through my website and you actually think about what's the experience i went here and i saw this and this person bought this and then this that they went over here and here's what the proof looks like so all of these architectures all this concept that's that's before you start clicking the button and building a website, you need to think through who's your client, what are you selling, how are you selling, and what's their experience going to look like, not just until purchase, but all the way through the whole process. Now, the next thing is this brand idea. It is really important that you nail the emotional experience that people have with you. And when people think about brand, people think about logo. What's my logo going to be? That is not it at all. And in fact, I have and will uh, give many webinars on brand, and I could spend two hours alone, as Taylor knows very, very well, talking just about the emotional experience and connecting people emotionally with what it is that you're doing. This is about everything. This is about the colors, this is about the consistency, this is about what makes you different than everybody else. And ultimately, every time somebody has an experience with you, they connect it to symbols, they connect it to colors, they connect it to emotions. And, and if they had a great experience and they connect that great thing with emotions and they see your symbol again, they eventually get more and more connected with that experience. And you wanna connect that great experience with your brand. And you know, water, which is actually free in Canada, effectively, turn on the tap and drink out of the tap, uh, not quite free, but pretty darn close, is actually more expensive than gasoline when branded properly. You guys have been at a restaurant and ordered water. Every single one of you out there I know has paid just to feel fancy for water that you believe tastes different than the tap water. Yeah, there's lots and lots of scientific evidence that shows that nobody can taste the difference between tap water and the water that you get in bottles. However, you still buy the bottle because of the experience that you had previously or the memory that you connect with people around those bottles. Now, all these things around branding, the story, the narrative around who you are, how you're, you know, the family I'm just showing you, how that fits together, all those things create that emotional connection. There's this idea of, and again, I could talk for hours about this, this idea of smashable brand. So if everybody out there right now looks at this picture and immediately recognizes what it is, and yet you're only seeing two letters out of the name Coca-Cola. And a smashable brand is a brand that if you could take any piece if, if, the, if the whole thing gets smashed on the ground and you just get a little tiny piece of paper or thing, you automatically recognize this as part of the original brand. Why that's important is this. If you go to the TreeFrog website, treefrog.ca right now, and you were to replace the top with the IKEA logo, you'd instantly know it was out of place. This is a really important concept because as you're building an e-commerce website, and I know you guys have been out to a website, you've dropped onto the website, and they're selling the product, and it's even at the price that, sh that you're seriously considering buying, and you look at the website and go, I don't trust these guys. I don't trust these guys at all. And why? Why is that? Why do you have that feeling that you can't trust them? Is it because there's broken stuff on the website? Because when you came up to the website, it just didn't look right? Is it because you haven't bought from them before? Well, it could be that. But it's more likely that the actual branding, that the aesthetics, that the feeling that they're exuding is creating dissonance in your head. That you're actually really, you really don't believe that they're gonna be able to get you the product without taking your credit card and giving it to some Russian hackers or, or, uh, or, or screwing it up and you're not gonna get it for four months or, or something like that. And yet, I just bought from a random site, the Color Cord Company, beautiful website, bought something from them, had an amazing experience, and now I'm telling all you about it because I'm so excited about these guys and the experience they've created for me. And I will note, they delivered exactly what they said they were gonna deliver within 48 hours. I was just absolutely blown away. Now, I had a great relationship with them, great connection with them, and now I can recommend them to everybody. When you go build your website, are you gonna do that? Or are you just gonna throw something up there and hope people buy from you? So this, this, is, this ultimately comes down to whether you're just going to take a template, throw a logo that you got on 99designs or at Staples up on it and hope that it sells and wonder why you went to this amazing webinar with Sean Stevens and Taylor Duckworth. And at the end, 
you went, wait a second, this guy must have been full of junk because he it, it it didn't work for me. Well, it's not going to work for you unless you really deeply think who are your clients, what are the aesthetics, what's your brand going to be like, what's the message you're going to be, who exactly you're selling to, and the entire thing is designed in that way. So now, of course, the cost goes up once you start doing graphic designer work and you start doing slicing and doing all the coding around it, uh, but it is a very important process. Now, the next thing that's really important for you guys to understand, and I can and will spend hours on this, but I'm gonna give you guys just a taste of what we're gonna talk about in a few weeks, which is the magic of SEO and how search engine optimization, which is rising up to the top of Google, works. The most important concept here is that people surveyed, whoever came in the number one position, typically is the one that people buy from at least is the person that people, or the website that people think is the best product. It has nothing to do with being the best product, and yet people subscribe, people have that feeling that this must be the, the best company out there doing this activity because they're number one on Google. Now, uh, the, the question is, how do you fight this sort of mentality? How do you get up to the top of Google? So listen, I'm going to, we'll probably have an SEO engineer at the next, um, uh, a webinar, but I'm going to tell you the secret that no web SEO engineer wants to admit, and that is that to get to the top of Google, it's a point system. Google crawls the internet, crawls the web. They crawl your websites for five pages every day. They come to a website, look at a look at a bunch of pages, and then they rank them. And they look at the page, and they can only do this mathematically. They don't have people doing it. They have people. They just have math, and they look at the word. Let's say, fork. And they look, uh, how many times does the word fork appear on the web page? 10 times, okay, they'll give you X number of points. Does the word fork appear in the title on the front page? Yes, they'll give you extra points. Does the word fork appear in the first paragraph? Does the word fork appear in the URL? Does the word fork appear in links? Does the word fork appear on other pages of the website? And how many times does it appear on an algorithm score? And there's a whole bunch of positive and negative points that you get. So if you have links from really bad websites that go into you, you get less points. So it's about on-page and off-page optimization, literally what it's called, is optimizing the math and trying to figure things out. And in fact, one of the biggest shifts in, in modern times, modern times being the last few years, is actually social connections. So if you have a website that's got amazing SEO and yet you don't have any social connections, you're gonna struggle. It's the big picture and how does, how does that omni-channel marketing work and how does it all come back to the center that will mean the most. And every time you do something that enhances the word fork on your website, you get an additional point. And whoever has the most points wins. Here's the thing is if people come to us and try to pay us to win their game just through the magic rattle of SEO. But here's the thing, Google's job is to try and get the best answer when you type in to Google anything. When you type in sale, when you type in forks for sale, Google goes through all their stuff and goes, look, we need to find that person the best answer for the word fork. It's as simple as that. So if you, if you know that Google's job is to find the best answer, you have two choices. One is you can do a whole bunch of math and try and win against Google. And Google will change their algorithm every single day to try and find a better answer than you have. Or the second is become the best answer for the word fork. And this is where suddenly content marketing and search engine marketing and all the other stuff starts to fill together because you could become the best answer, have the best and most information about forks on the internet, and then Google's job will be to find you. As soon as you have that mental connection, you realize, look, it's not exclusively about math. Yes, we need to get all the math stuff right, but actually it's about writing great content, communicating great, and having and creating an amazing experience for the people who are buying from us. Do that, and you won't have to spend all the money on SEO. If you are the most credible and the best answer for the word fork, you will win it by default. This is the Tower of Google. Either have the most credible presence on the web, the best answer, or spend a whole whack load of money with TreeFrog doing that, which I'm, I'm okay with.
you have the phone number. Okay, so uh, here's the big thing is now that we've talked about those big philosophies, now I wanna get, get down a step and teach you guys every single major platform that's out there, depending on the size of your business. Before I get into that though, I wanna talk about how e-commerce isn't just building a website and selling things online through a website, through your website. There is e-commerce, I'm gonna come back to that. I wanna just quickly talk about social commerce, retail, et cetera, et cetera. So let's talk first about point of sale platform. So if you have a store and again, you're struggling right now because you're, you're struggling with selling stuff. And I, and I will know, we deal with many of these. Uh, in fact, when COVID hit, a bunch of stores came to us and said, look, we're really struggling. We can't obviously stay open. Uh, we need to move our stuff online. And there are all these platforms that you could instantly move to, where, which are actually web platforms. So for example, Lightspeed, Ben, Shopify, QS. And what those do is they become your in-store point of sale system. So you get rid of your old, you know, ka-ching, and you replace it with an iPad with the technology on it. And you still manage cash and credit cards inside your store, but every product and all your inventory is live live out to the internet as well. And so you become truly integrated between e-commerce and your store itself. And there are three sort of major platforms in this Lightspeed, Vend, and Shopify. I gotta tell you, I am a big fan of Lightspeed uh, for two reasons. One, they're Canadian. I know Shopify's Canadian too, but uh, I, I just like that they just have great service, great stuff. Having said that, Shopify is an obvious next answer because they are so big that they are eventually going sort of tumble over everybody. But if you're looking for great products here and you have a store, that is a great place to start. There's also e-commerce marketplaces. And I want to specify what's different about a marketplace than an e-commerce website. So let's say I don't have a lot of forks. I actually only have a few forks. I only have a dozen forks that I want to sell. Or I actually don't want to get into the marketing business. I just want to sell forks. Well, you could actually go and sell through Amazon. You could sell your product through Amazon if you have a bucket load of forks to try sell. You can also, if you have special artistic forks, like you, you bedazzled forks in a special way, but you can only do X number, you probably don't want to build an e-commerce website because you've got one-offs. You're selling one at a time, in which case you go to an artsy place like Etsy. If you have just one fork you're trying to sell, you might go to eBay. And there's, you know, that, there's different ways you might approach things. What, what's different about a marketplace is that, and I'm gonna use the example of Etsy here because it's probably the best example. Etsy is really artisan focused. So if you're bedazzling forks one-off, Etsy is probably the best place to sell it because the reality is people who are artsy tend to buy other artsy stuff. And so they have a pre-existing group of people who are already there buying each other's stuff. And this is a place where you can join a group of people who are crafty and sell stuff to them. And thus you can sell your individual fork a little bit more effectively. So depending on what the makeup of the products and things that you're trying to sell will depend on whether you're going to bother building an e-commerce website or whether you're going to use a pre-existing group of people and sell to them. There's another thing which is really important in this e-commerce discussion, which is growing and growing every day, and that's social commerce. And basically this is social commerce and this applies to all the major platforms, which is selling right off of posts. So I'm gonna, I'll show you what that looks like. So for example, on Instagram, you go to Instagram and you see, you see products on Instagram and you can literally buy right through Instagram. And probably the most, most more obvious thing is, is Facebook where I can go to Facebook and I can tag different things. And that actually appears in the feeds and actually buy things off the images from the feeds. So this is literally integrated shopping on Facebook. I'm not talking Facebook marketplace, which I'll get to. So that's social shopping. So social commerce and social commerce, that is going to be, I'm gonna say, from an omni-channel perspective. I'm gonna look at the big, the big, we wanna sell bulk products to groups of people. You may not even need to make an e-commerce website. There are lots of really successful people we're selling tons online who don't have a website. They're exclusively selling through social selling. Uh, and, and obviously the, the large organizations are doing that. 
What's also fascinating is, is that if you go back to what's the group of people, remember at the beginning, I said, the most important thing is figure out who you're selling to, who's going to buy forms. It's not about whether you want to make a website. It's not, it's about genuinely who's going to buy stuff from you. Once you figured that out, you might go look and say, look, actually Pinterest is a great place for me to sell this really cool product. In which case go sell it there. There, because once you've identified the group of people who uses Pinterest and the group of people you want to sell stuff to, you may find that selling off of Google may not, uh, Google and e-commerce may not be the way you want to go. If you're selling one-off products or have fewer products, then we get into, <coughs> excuse me, app sales. So you, you guys already know about, obviously, this Kijiji uh, which you, and eBay, which have been around for a, a dog's years. But in fact, there's all these other things. There are, I'm not sure how many of you have tried out Virage Sale uh, or Offer It or, or any one of the other. Uh, Taylor, you wonder what's the last one that you used? Um, I actually have any of these. I used um, an app called Poshmark, which is a newer one. But it does wow. basically the same thing that right. all these other apps do. <laughs> So I, I was using Virage Sale this morning. In fact, while, while I was sitting here, I had somebody, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a, for anyone who has one of these, a French provincial dining room table, because I kind of got like this, this French provincial thing happening all of a sudden. And so uh, I, you know, I don't want to go pay $5,000 for one of these things when every grandmother out there is looking at getting rid of her French provincial and replacing it with a nice Ikea table. Anyway, so Virage Sale, of course, is a place where I can go upload my one-off product or one thing. That is, it, you can also put products up there that, that, that's not limited to a one-off product, but it is a way people sell online. And I would say uh, probably the, the most popular and, and where there's a ton of activity, and I would say right now, uh, it, it, you can quote me on this, that if you don't know where to start and don't have the time and effort to go through and build a website and the money, because it does take money and time to go build something, uh, that you could go throw something on Facebook Marketplace by the end of the day today and start doing business. I, I release you from your fear of using Facebook, go use it and start selling stuff and you'll see it start to move. Like they, I would say it's one of the biggest hidden gems and secrets that's out there right now. Okay. So now that we've talked about all of those other platform, other ways to sell, let's get right down deep. So now we're even a step down into which technology we could possibly use for e-commerce. Sean, again, if you're a B in here, so we have a question, and I kind of touched okay. on it when him and I were chatting, but he yeah. basically is asking, what is the best way to figure out your brand? Is there a standard process or set of questions? Ultimately, how can you see your brand on paper ultimately how can you see your brand on paper so uh well that that, that there's the one is you could go to some branding webinars we give them and you could go through the process and think what is the process of that uh that would probably help you there is and honestly i could talk for uh, literally hours about what that process looks like uh you could hire a professional organization like tree frog we have a branding process that we run through so if you're interested in talking to us about that uh, let's take that offline. Uh, having said that, you know, brand brand isn't as simple as uh, that. We can go through a set of questions and figure it out. It is a complex process of trying to figure out what's the persona, what's the what's the personality that I'm going to give to the world, what is the mood, what are the aesthetics, etc. So I would suggest that if you're interested in that, try and convince Laura to let us do a two-hour presentation on branding, and I will take you through the whole process. Uh, or Reach out to Tree Frog afterwards, and I would happily talk to you personally about what that process looks like. Uh, hopefully, that answered the question. If not, let 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 Taylor know, and she can she can get us started again. Okay, so I'm going to pick up where I left off on the e-commerce platform. So listen, in the next I'm going to say 10 minutes, I'm going to go through all of the major platforms uh, that you might bump into uh, that you would want to start your business, on. and very much. Depending on the size of the organization that you have, depending on whether you're a proto founder, I mean, you just have an idea for, for a website or whether you'd like a, uh, a, a, a giant organization that wants to sell their entire ERP's uh, list of 100,000 products through four countries and 17 different shipping mechanisms. 
you can't, there is no one panacea to solve both of those questions. So if, if you're a small business, you're gonna start with Wix. If you're a more complex business, you're gonna end up on Magento. I'm just gonna say that out right, right now. <clears throat> now, the, the difference here is that Wix is probably, is without a doubt, based on what I've seen, the, the easiest to use, but it's also the most limited in where it can go. Magento is the most freeing. You can do anything. You can do an unbelievable things with Magento. But it is such a pain and so expensive to work with that it's on the other end. So before you jump in and decide which platform you're going to use, you kind of need to know what are the major platforms and where do they fit into where I am as a business. So uh, right now, just so you're uh, aware, the most like to say popular or the claim, the one that claims to be the most popular is WooCommerce. Now WooCommerce is a plugin for WordPress, and WordPress was designed as as sort of a blogging platform, not really as a content management system. As a result, uh, people just sort of built their website and went, hey, I should sell some stuff on this. And so they threw on WooCommerce. And listen, WooCommerce is a very powerful platform. It allows you to do a lot of things, but it is not explicitly designed from the ground up as an e-commerce platform. Shopify is, it is an ex it, that, that's really all it does. You wouldn't start a blog on Shopify because Google really wouldn't like it. Um, however, it, it's also a kind of a one person orientated, one person managing the website orientated platform. If you're gonna sell to multiple countries, Shopify already breaks. And that's why you would end up on a larger platform. Now the growth of all of these is insane, but the, the single greatest growth is of course Shopify, which this year became Canada's largest organization. I think this is fascinating because when you start thinking about the connection between the world's largest taxi service is actually now Uber. The world's largest uh, the hotel chain is now Airbnb. And the world's largest commerce platform, and I would compare Shopify to Walmart. Shopify is bigger than Walmart. It's just different the way Airbnb is bigger than any other hotel chain, but isn't a hotel chain, if that makes sense. And Shopify, you know, in their incredible growth has just, has been able to go out and create a lot of different cool things in order to provide better and, and additional things for people who are building websites with. So that's a really important distinction to understand. We've got Shopify, which is a platform, meaning they host it, you go to them, and you sort of pay them and you pay for all the upgrades. And then if you want to do really hyper-customized stuff, which we do a ton of, uh, it's really painful. You're using Ruby on Rails and their own system called Liquid and bashing your head against things and, and to make things work. If you want more customization, then you are downloading WordPress onto your own hosted platform, installing WooCommerce as a plugin onto WordPress, and then doing other things to make that work. But that's more cost and more hassle than Shopify, but now you have a lot more freedom. If you want, if you don't want to use Shopify, you could use big commerce. This is the same modeling as Shopify. It, it is more specific places where they've got niches. Uh, and then if you want to go up and you want to do, and, and here's what it is. So if, if you want to have four different languages in for four different countries, and you want every different country to have a different shipping mechanism, you can't do that with Shopify. You're, you're, you're now upgrading yourself to Magento. And if, listen, if you wanna get a website up by two o'clock this afternoon, you're using Wix. So we've kind of got two things. We've got platforms, which is, look, it's already it's just, just add water, make some selections and it will work. But it, as you grow and upgrade, it's costly and it's kind of limited in, in what it can do. Or I can use software like WooCommerce of Magento. And now I'm paying an agency to put it all together. But now I can pretty much do anything I can imagine to it without, you know, and I got multiple people managing the content. So depending on where you are, growth wise, depending on what you pick. Well, let's, let's dig into each one of these just quick. And so I've got Wix. So Wix is super low cost. And in fact, I'll talk about this in a second, but my 12 year old son built a website in the summer. He started with Shopify because it was my recommendation and he couldn't figure it out. So he figured out on his own how to use Wix without any of my help. 
So that just gives you a sense of how easy it is to use. You literally log on, you create something, and I'm going to go through this a little bit more with Shopify. But you, with Wix, it is just follow your nose. It's so simple. Shopify, again, it's a little bit limited. We talked about that, but they've got a lot of things in the ecosystem now. They've got a lot of pretty themes. So you could pick a nice theme. You know, you, there's a nice dashboard. I'm going to walk through this in detail today. And another benefit that they have is they actually have their own, call it, uh, uh, it's an app. Basically, it'll siphon off all your products and add it to their app, which is Shop. To be honest, I don't think a lot of people have this app yet. But knowing Shopify, they can throw an infinite amount of money at it, so it's, it's inevitably going to grow. If you really hate Shopify for some reason, and you, and you're, or you're from New Zealand or Australia, which is where these guys are from, uh, you would then go use Big Commerce. And same idea. I think their focus is more sort of arts uh, and photographers and, and things around beauty. So Shopify is more about products and widgets, and Big Commerce is more about uh, photography stuff and, and sort of beauty things that way. So. Depending on where you are as a niche as a business, you might choose big commerce, same sort of idea. Now I've got WooCommerce, I talked to this a little bit, which is if you know WordPress, if you've been used to using WordPress for the last 10 years, it's been around forever, everybody kind of knows it. Uh, there's, it's, WordPress is by far the most used platform in the world, it's like 65% of the internet. Then you could just add this plugin and bam, you're off to the races. You know, it still costs money, so you're paying them. But then you could immediately start adding products and add other things. And then the ability to customize is really amazing. And you have access to all the other WordPress things, and all the other WordPress plugins and platforms, et cetera. And of course, the last one, which I'm just going to cover here quickly, is Magento. And here's the complexity of Magento, which is not only can I have multiple websites, so I can have a different website. And out of one Magento installation, I can install a website for every different country and automatically, depending on what country I come from, I would get a different website, and then I would be able to choose how I want it shipped and how I want, you know, there's just such complexity. With Wix, if you have a set of products that's sort of one product deep, and you want to go to two products deep, like two categories, so forks and spoons, I think that's about the limit of Wix. Shopify, you could sell forks, spoons, and maybe plates. And then if you want to start adding clothing, you're out of luck. Because it's kind of a one dimensional, one level category. Magento will allow you to have 200,000 products with all sorts of different you know, listings and categorizations and places, et cetera. And thus is a lot more powerful about that. Now, I, I'm not going to get into this in detail today. Because it really is contingent on the product that you're selling and, and who you're selling to and where you're selling, what your, what your end user looks like. But two of the biggest limitations and problems when it comes to e-commerce that screws everybody up every single time are shipping and taxes. And, and honestly, Shopify's not having multiple countries is not about because they can't do it technically. It's about the need to manage shipping and taxes. So the first is, how are we going to get the thing to the person after we've sold it? And the other is, how are we going to collect and manage taxes so that we don't get thrown in prison for failure to do that? So if you are exclusively selling to Canadians, Shopify is going to be so easy for you because it's all kind of built like that. If you're selling to Canadians and Americans, now you're going to have to have two Shopify websites and manage taxes in two different ways. Uh, and again, this is the complexity. I'm not going to go into that in detail. If you need help with that, you can reach out to us afterwards or just watch some YouTube videos specific to your interest or specific to what you're looking for. Another concept that's going to be important for today as I do my walkthrough with you is the idea of drop shipping. So drop shipping is the idea that instead of going and making a fork, so I could go make bulk forks, make a machine that sells forks, and now bulk forks and will sell. Or I could buy somebody else's forks and bedazzle them and sell them one at a time. Or I could do drop shipping. Drop shipping is I build a website, I never actually see a fork, I find another supplier of forks, and I ship direct from the fork manufacturer to the end user without actually seeing the fork myself. 
Uh, and there's lots of, and this is sort of a new way. It's sort of a, you become a micro distributor of this product. Now, if you're out there today, I'm just going to go there right now. I'd like you to go to watchus.shop. So watchus.shop is a drop shipping website built by my 12 year old son all by himself without me prodding him. Again, this, this vision of himself to become a multimillionaire, which I, I love because uh, then he can support me when I'm old and broke. Uh, this is, is just him sitting down and playing with different colors and putting stuff on and then using uh, a drop shipping. I actually don't know what to use. I think he used Modelist, uh, which I'll talk about today, to go pick which watches he would like to sell on his website and then put those on his website and then actually sell them. And I will note, he is selling watches off of his website. Here is a picture of him playing with 3D printers as well, because he's 3D printing stuff on the side. Now, here's the thing about building an e-commerce website. I am now gonna walk you through that process. By the end of today, you can have a website and be selling a product that you don't even make using dropshipping. And if my 12 year old son can do this all by himself, you guys can too. I mean, truly my son is brilliant, don't get me wrong, but he, he literally did it. Now here, here's my favorite part about this. So I just gotta tell you this. So he builds Watch Us that Shop, sets the whole pr the website up and starts selling watches. And of course, you know, as a proud father, I may have promoted him on LinkedIn myself, uh, and some of the CEOs and friends that I have may have bought watches from. Now, he collected their money, but actually didn't follow through with the process of ordering the watches and sending the watches to the CEOs. He failed on that relationship and in the back. So of course, a month later, I start getting complaints about the fact, this is about two weeks ago, that he, none of the watches have shipped, uh, that he was just collecting the money and didn't actually deliver the watches. So, needless to say, we then go through the process of what does the experience of the client look like? They've all, all of his first clients have had a terrible experience with buying watches. We have now shipped all of the watches that were purchased from the original are still selling watches. Please feel free to buy a watch from my 12-year-old son. I will not be taking his money. He will use it to go buy new 3D printers and start most of his business. If you don't know that you can't do it, you can do it. You guys out there that are scared to get into e-commerce, it's only because you think you can't, not because you can't. So, I'm now gonna take you guys on a quick walk through Shopify. Now, the, a typical walkthrough would involve me logging out and getting into Shopify, but what I've found is number one is, is that if I do that, I'm gonna lose everybody. And you're gonna watch the video and it's gonna take, so I'm gonna walk you through step by step and what to click on in this very presentation and you will be able to follow through with this and you'll be able to remember how to follow this note i'm going to fall to this later and figure it out so the theory here is i want to go sell something online i have this idea that i believe people will buy something which is actually from a show called the simpsons you may have seen it uh, this is homer simpson's idea of selling nuts and gum which I think is a great idea. We're going to go sell nuts and gum, and by the end of this presentation, I will set up a website to sell nuts and gum. So I'm going to choose the platform because I'm kind of in that mid-range where I want to sell. I want some some more horsepower than just Wix. Uh, you can go to Wix and follow your nose, and I guarantee you, you can figure it out. So I'm going to walk you through a slightly more complex system, which is Shopify. And you go to Shopify.ca. I'm going to go up to the top right-hand corner where you see that red box, and I'm going to click Start Free Trial. Click that button, leads me to a very simple website. I get a 14-day free trial of Shopify. I'm going to fire in an email address, create a password, and I'm going to create a store name, in this case, Nuts and Gum. It will take a few seconds as it creates my store, and then it will ask me some questions. Like, what am I selling? How am I selling? What is that? I go through and I answer those questions regarding nuts and gum. And each question leads me to some more questions and it will make recommendations to me based on them. Once I've done that, I will actually add an address, which is my business address that I will be shipping from. And I'll click enter my store. And then I get the classic Shopify administration side. 
listen, once you get used to Shopify, you're going to get so used to this particular aesthetic, this administration system, because you're going to live in it. You're going to live your entire business life inside this menu right here. Now, the first thing that I want to do, of course, is I want to make this website look pretty because I, I want it to be interesting. So before I add any products, I'm actually going to click on customize theme. I'm going to go down. You'll see the red box around customized theme. I'm going to click the tab and then I'm going to click the button customize theme. I click customize theme and now it takes me to the themes section, which is just really was on the menu to my left under online store. Now there's right at the bottom there, you'll see that already Shopify has installed a theme for me called debut, which is the standard first Shopify theme. Now I'm just going to use that standard theme. I'm going to click customize and now we will go into sort of the theme editing mode. And I will see that the basic website is there. I can sort of scroll up and down the website in the middle and on the left, all the modules, all the Lego blocks that make up this website. I can go edit. So I'm going to click the first one, which is image with text overlay. And these are kind of Lego blocks on top of one another that make up the page that scrolls up and down. I'm going to click image with text overlay and I'm going to upload, select a picture and upload a picture of nuts. It's actually washer, nuts and washers. I, I'm going the wrong kind of nuts here, but this is the nuts that I picked for this website. So there's nuts and gum. I'm going to change that. I'm going to click save. Now, this is really important. I'm going to click publish. But doing that, if I fail to do that, I lose all my information. This is actually really important. If I have two people editing this website, one person, every time they click save, will overwrite everybody else's stuff. So, really, this is a one person edits the website at a time platform. So, I click publish, and now, I, I've published that aesthetic to my website. Now, if I don't like that theme debut, which I started with, I can scroll down on that themes page and I can do one of two things. I can either go get a free theme or I can go and buy a theme from an external partner. So let's say I want a free theme. So I click free themes and I can scroll through all of these different aesthetics for my website. So I can pick one. And again, remember back to that, that discussion I had earlier, uh, what's most important, what drives all business is the relationship that you're going to create with your end client. So you're picking something that makes it easy for them to navigate the website. So I can pick one of those themes, pick a theme, or I can go buy a theme. And honestly, you could spend hours and hours and hours literally going and picking a theme and customizing the theme to make it look like your store. Or I can just pick one, I can throw some pictures in it, and I can get rolling. There you go. Now I've, I've created a theme, I've added a theme, I've chosen a theme, and for a brand, I mean, we could spend hours just talking about themes, you can watch videos on themes, you could hire a professional company like us to go customize the theme for you, uh, make it branded for you, uh, or play with it on your own. Now, what I, what I want to do is after I've got my theme, I need to go add a product. I'm going to go to the products thing on the side or on from the tab, and I'm going to click add product. Now, if I make my own forks, I will actually add forks directly into Shopify. I will actually take the fork and add it uh, and, and, and add it into this product section. However, today, because I do not have a new product to sell, I'm actually going to use a drop shipping company. So what I want to do here is I want to sell forks. So I'm going to go to the app button. I'm going to click the app button and I'm going to go and find an app called Modelist. Now this is a drop shipping partner using AliExpress, uh, which is basically Chinese suppliers of products and it's all physical products. There are lots of these. You can sell print stuff. You can sell uh, clothing. You can sell uh, Bob's your uncle. Go do some digging on what you want to sell and find a drop shipping partner that will sell forks for you. Or in this case, nuts and gum. So I will add this instead of adding my own products. I'm going to add the drop shipping company. 
I'm going to add this app. I'm going to log into my store through the app, and then I'm going to install this into Shopify. It's really that simple. A few clicks. Now, it will then send me to modelist.co. So when I get to Modelist, now I have to create an account on Modelist so that I can drop ship. So I put in the name of the business, I put it all together, and now I log into what will become the other place as a business if I'm doing drop shipping that I will spend a lot of time on. Here, I will actually go to the Modelist website and I will see right in the center there's a search and I will search for products. You wouldn't believe how many products are on this website. I, I mean, it's in the millions. You will find everything that you can imagine. In this case, I typed in nuts and I went to one of those products and now I see a product which I can drop ship. So this is a, a little plastic bucket of nuts. I bought one last week, I'm not kidding, uh, because I have a project that actually needed them for 3D printers, so I, I went and bought this exact little thing. Now, I know this is a physical product, so now I add it to my import list. I click import list, and then this is now in my list from model list. So they are now managing drop shipping for me. I click a button and I will now add it to Shopify. It's left model list now, it's left my product list. And now I go back to Shopify. Actually, I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add gum. Now they don't have gum on model list because it's food product and this is a product drop shipper. So I'm going to add gum teening, uh, the gum management supplies here. Uh, so I'm going to add dental floss to my product list. So I went and searched for dental floss, I found it, and now I add this back to Shopify. Now, Shopify has two products, portable dental floss and do-it-yourself bolts. Those products are now on my website and I can now Go through the whole process. I now have a website that I've customized. I've added products to it through Modelist, which will automatically ship if somebody buys them. Now I just want to go through and understand what else is in Shopify. On the left hand side, you'll see there's the home button, which we've already seen. There's the orders button. If somebody orders through me, you'll see it in this list. And you can manage and see everything related to the order. I can also see the customers who have bought from me. So I can see if they have had multiple orders, I can communicate with them, I can go back and forth, etc. There's the analytics button. You know, there's sort of limited analytics here. This is great until you're selling a few thousand dollars a month. Uh, we had a client we built a Shopify website for last year. Uh, they were doing about ten thousand dollars a month when we when we got started, and now they're doing one point four million dollars a month. And the, and the analytics here aren't sufficient. So now we're using uh, Google Analytics and external analytics to try and get more information. But when you first get started, this is a great dashboard for how your sales look like, et cetera. And of course, you can, you can install external apps to hypercharge your Shopify website. So there you go. In 10 minutes, and honestly, this only takes about half an hour, you can go set up a Shopify website, Add products to it that you don't even have that you using from an external uh, external source. Go through and set it all up, and now send this website live. Of course, it costs money. You now have to pay Shopify to get the store running. And of course, you'll go down to the bottom left-hand corner where you see a button called Settings. You're going to add a domain name, buy a domain name, so www.nutsandgumforsale.com. I did not buy that. If you guys want to, you go can, you can go start this. I'm not actually gonna continue with my nuts and gum store. I was just playing for the sake of everybody here at the webinar today. However, I just did it. I just became an e-commerce retailer and now can go to cocktail parties and tell everybody that I sell nuts and gum online for the sake of people who love nuts and gum. There you go. There's my website, Nuts and Gum, right now, nutsandgum.myshopify.com. Now, I haven't paid for it, so you guys can't get to it, but it is there, and it sells products, both dental floss and do-yourself, and those are the only buttons I clicked. I didn't change any content. I didn't add anything new. I literally just followed my nose through the process, and I now have me.
Now, for anybody who's been, made a website before, that's actually pretty straightforward. Anybody who's created a Shopify website, that's all pretty straightforward. Now, we brought our stock Honda Accord and we want to slam it now by sticking a whole bunch of extra apps on it to make it supercharged. We're going to put some jet engines on the front of our e-commerce store. And this is where Shopify's entire ecosystem really starts to shine. Because I've set up a store, I've got some products in it, I've cleaned up the content, I've added imagery around it. What I'm missing now are all the other things. So now there's all these other apps and they're all paid apps, they're all paid upgrades. It's just like buying a Honda Accord and adding all the other stuff to it. So we've got things like customer feedback. So you go into their apps and you do a search for customer feedback and you can actually communicate and get feedback from all your customers. There's cross-selling. So uh, if you liked this, you may also like this. If you like want to buy nuts, you may also want to buy gum, right? So now you've got to go through your product lists and figure out what do people want to buy. Depending on previous sales, you get this obviously on Amazon, Customers who bought this also like this. You can add that to Shopify. You can add cart abandonment. This is huge. So people go, they start buying, and this is actually a critical thing, that people will try and buy something on their mobile device, really not have a great experience, and leave the cart. So what you do is you send them, an, and then literally buy stuff, get all the way to the end, and not want to have to type their credit card information into Shopify. So now what you do is you send them an email and say, by the way, your cart is still there and if you want to pick it up and finish the purchase you can and you remind them because they just don't want to buy it at the time that you still have it there for them that's an upgrade that you can add another great one is a welcome mat so you can add bars along the top you can add pop-ups so you can add other information and sort of say hey while you're here i'll give you 20 percent off if it's your first purchase i'll give you uh, you know, if while you're here, we've got this uh, free shipping or other things. So you have all sorts of different things that you can welcome people to the store with who haven't bought from you before. You can add referral programs. So if you if you enjoyed your product, this is sort of post purchase. Uh, give us a referral. We'll give you a referral code if somebody else buys from us. Uh, we'll give you a percentage off next time you come. And now you're creating that post relationship, post sale thing which is so important to the growth of your store. Uh, same idea, rewards and loyalty. I can add that, I can add, give people rewards uh, for coming and using the store. Social proofing, and listen, there's boatloads of this. This is from digital marketing perspective. If I wanna make sure that people will post pictures of their using the product in real life, if I want to trigger external, so I want people to take a picture, post it on Instagram, and I'll give them a referral code based on their use of that. There's so many different things that I could do to stimulate people who have purchased from me to refer more people to me. There's wish lists. So while I'm here, I don't want to create a card. I want to buy one of these. I want to buy one of these. And then I can send it to my friends and they'll buy it for me for my birthday or for Christmas. A great way of sort of making sure other people buy. There's bundling. So if you buy these three things, you'll get this percentage off. So another thing that you can do to stimulate, especially if you have high margin things, and things that you want to sell at, uh, at low margin to attract people to your store, then you bring people in, sell them a fork and offer them a knife uh, and give it to them for a percentage off. And of course, because shipping, there's less hassle for you, you get more per order and your profit goes up. There's pre-ordering. So let's say you don't even want to make the product yet. You're thinking of making another fork. So what you do is you go sell another whole type of fork before you even make it. And you could have people buy those forks and pre-order them with the promise that you're gonna sell it to them later. Uh, and there's returning. So obviously some people wanna return that. This is managing the relationship afterwards. Don't forget that people are gonna to wanna to return stuff. So you can have all sorts of mechanisms for this where you put it back, you return it, or this all depending on the business, depending on how you handle returns, you have all sorts of options for that. And listen, the, the, these things just keep on going, countdowns. So you could have a countdown clock for a product that has a price that's gonna end, so you stimulate a purchase by a certain time, and you could move to a different countdown and then push that out. And you know, another favorite that I have that I've seen work for me and for other people is video shopping, where you can actually have somebody book time with you personally 
to walk through the store with you as if you're in real life and talk you through what it is that they're going to buy. And obviously, because of that, the likelihood that you're going to sell goes way up. So those are all ways you could slam your website. Uh, slam, for those of you who don't know, is when you take your car and you lower it by a few inches to make it go faster. Now, I had promised you at the beginning of this presentation that in an hour and a half, and I'm not a few minutes before, I would give you all the information starting at the very top, philosophically, all of the different reasons and how on how you're going to sell and what that looks like, then down to the philosophies themselves, show you all the different pieces conceptually of building a website, how you're going to manage your relationships, then tell you about all the platforms, and then walk you through an explicit platform exactly on what steps you would take, and then show you a whole bunch of upgrades to take that even further. And I believe I have done all of those things. And by the end of today, any one of you, I, I think there's 50 of you, could go start a website with a new idea, selling a product that you don't even make, and start making money immediately. From here on in, it's just about entrepreneurial vim and vigor because you have all of the tools at your fingertips to go become a billionaire by selling online. Uh, let's, let's move on to some questions. We still have uh, 15 minutes left. And uh, I, I, if anybody has any questions, throw them inside the, uh, the chat there and we'll answer them. Uh, let's start at the very top. So I'm selling a product online, but not on my own brand. So lots of us do this, of course. I have a Shopify store and I'm using Facebook advertising to reach my customers. They do go to my website and check my products, but end up messaging me on my Facebook Messenger and buy from me in cash. I would love to do all sales activities inside my store instead of then directing me to buy them, buy from me. So my gut tells me, well, so there, there's a specific issue here, which is maybe what you're selling is something that people only want to pay cash for. So if that's maybe that's the issue. And maybe it's that they feel that they're either they only have cash and they don't have credit cards. So the group of people you're selling to don't even have it, in which case that's going to be a hard one to fight. More likely, though, is they feel that they're getting a special relationship, that they're getting something different or better than something else. So if you use that video technique or if you offered people tax free, which is basically just raise the price of your product by the value of tax and then offer them tax free and remit tax anyway. Just, I'm not saying don't remit to the government, obviously. Um, so there's all sorts of ways that you want to rethink that relationship with your end clients just creatively so that they don't feel that they're getting a better deal maybe or that they can only offer it through cash in that way. Probably they feel that if they go to your website, they're going to get less of a deal than if they go to you personally. So that's just conceptually, you probably have an experiential issue on your website. And that's why they want to come to you and deal with you direct. If you put three or four videos of yourself uh, and, and, and supporting stuff and other stuff and, and, and started getting rid of those barriers, you would eventually have them all buy from your website instead of wanting to buy from you. Does Shopify charge per sale or a flat fee? The answer is yes. Uh, there is a, a monthly fee that they charge you. All of those additional upgrades cost money. Basically, that, that's why they're billion dollar companies because they're taking money from everybody. It's like when you walk into a casino, you know that nobody's winning there, right? Because you look up and you're like, wow, there's lots of things here. There are lots of, lot, there, yes, there are lots of sales happening through Shopify, but getting your shop off the ground does cost a lot of money. Additionally, and it's big, so when we deal with larger manufacturer, a manufacturer comes to us and says, we think we should use Shopify. And we build them a whole Shopify thing. Well, Shopify takes a piece. So off every sale, they also take a percentage if you're using Shopify. Now, if you're running it through them, they get all the money off the credit card transaction. If you want to lower the cost and you use, say, Moneris or an external uh, partner, then Shopify still wants their, their cut. So they're going to take it both ways, and that's why they're a billion-dollar company and have a growing like crazy. Uh, Laura, I had a question. Sean, you said Etsy is good for art items. Which do you, one do you advise to sell quality handcrafting in different countries? So it uh, uh, depends on the country is the, is the real answer. Uh, so, it, you know, if you're selling in Canada and the U.S., 
Etsy, Etsy, Etsy. They're amazing. If you're selling in Africa, there are three or four other platforms off the, like off the top of my head. I think what we what specifically we want to know is what exact countries are you trying to sell the art stuff through? And again, this is all about watering holes. So different countries have different watering holes. Some people use WhatsApp. Uh, if you're in China, you're using you know other platforms you're using AliExpress. Nobody in China is using Facebook because you know it's banned. Uh, so it, it, it really depends on the country. Uh, what's the main difference when choosing between Wix and Shopify? Well, there's not really any main difference. Wix is really sort of a tool for programs, I would say, like really getting started at the beginning. Shopify has a has a lot more plugins, a lot you know greater reach. Now, Wix just came out with about two months ago with a new version of Wix, which is a lot more powerful, but it's still, I'm going to say, very limited compared with the growth potential of Shopify. I just walked you through how to build with Shopify. If you thought that was easy, Wix is unbelievably easier. Like, it is so foolproof, you wouldn't even believe it. So, Shopify is, e I'm sorry, Wix is easier, Shopify is more powerful. That's the main difference. Uh, next question. Uh, thanks for the great presentation. You're welcome. How I was wondering how can we connect customer to actual supplier of product using drop shipping, easy apps like Shopify. So if you're if you have uh, actual supplier products, so you have products yourself, and you'd like to get into drop shipping, that is also possible. So what you do is Modelist, for example, which has a partnership with Ali AliExpress. There are a whole bunch of other drop shippers who would love to sell your product for you and sort of perform that, that middleman process. And this isn't, this isn't a hard thing. So depending on the product, so if you're selling print supplies, or you're selling clothing, or you're selling physical widgets, or you're selling electronics, you would go find a drop shipping company and you would hook up your product set with them. And typically what they would do is they would actually hook into your ERP, or into your system, or you would upload and you would manage the products that you sell and deliver through their platform. So just I just taught you guys how to do e-commerce from the drop shipping supplier up. You can also do e-commerce from the drop shipping supplier down, if that makes sense. And and honestly, again, it's it depends. It depends on what you're what you're using. Uh, does any platform use artificial intelligence? Uh, what a great question. That is so right up my alley. Uh, the answer is they all do, uh, depending on what you mean by artificial intelligence. Uh, so artificial intelligence or machine learning is the idea that everything that you do improves the process moving forward. Uh, and really what you'll get is you'll get widgets or plugins that will do some of that intelligence gathering for you. So Shopify, Wix and others don't do it right out of the box at this time, uh, but the plugins that you can install will look at the sales that you have and automatically use patterns of purchasing to figure out what is going to work better in the future. I would say, though, that that all requires fairly hefty sales already working for you. So going in that, that's why if you look at our roadmap, uh, artificial intelligence is, I think, the seventh or eighth thing that you get into. First, get into brand, get your sales working, get some of those competitive advantages, get your customers rolling. Once you've got 10, to $30,000 a month in sales, then you start getting into artificial intelligence uh, plugins, depending on the product and what business you're in. Uh, there's another question, which is, uh, what options are to find Canadian manufacturers for sourcing products or bulk buying options? Uh, Canadian manufacturers, I'm not actually aware of a drop shipping supplier or mechanism to just find Canadian manufacturers. Uh, I don't think there is one. The drop shipping that I'm aware of is mostly focused on the states. In fact, I haven't found a great drop shipping supplier in the states that was not sort of state C focused yet. Uh, if anybody has an answer to that question, I, I would promise if you want to take that offline, uh, send me an email or connect with Taylor, uh, and we will go find an answer for that. Um, that's first time in a while. There's a question that I cannot answer. Uh, that's great. Uh, uh, how do I, another question, how do I get traffic on my Shopify website? Wow, that is such a big question. I think that is the one, if not the perfect end question, maybe it's not the end question, because we have lots more time for questions. 
But really, traffic building is about, and again, it's, it's, it's about a, a myriad of different things, but one obvious way is through search engine ranking is to rank for more things. So when people are searching on Google, they find more things. And we're running an entire webinar on that in a few weeks. Another way would be digital marketing. Digital marketing is using things like search and it's like uh, uh, social media uh, and search engines and AdWords and other things in order to drive more traffic to your website. Now, those are what digital marketing is, and there's obviously other ways. Uh, the least productive way would be to drop leaflets from a plane, uh, and and then of course people would find a piece of paper and they would go to your website. Uh, that is the least common denominator of 10,000 different marketing ways to get more traffic to your Shopify website. So getting more traffic is, I mean, that huge question is about figuring out who you're selling to, figuring out where and what watering holes do they currently shop at, what are they looking for, triggering their actions towards finding you, proving that you exist, finding when the moment is that they wanna buy something, getting them to find you at that exact moment, convincing them that you're the right person that they should be buying from, and then giving them a great experience so they come back and buy from you in the past. Another question today is, is there a list of drop shipping partners? Uh, on, it depends on what platform. So Wix and Shopify and Magento, they all have different uh, drop shipping partners. So it depends on what platform you're using. And all you do is you go into Shopify, you type in drop shipping, and they will show you all of the different platforms that they work with currently they have apps for. Uh, because you can't really connect them yourself, you have to rely on the drop shippers having the module for them. Uh, Modelist, for example, works on both Wix and Shopify. That's one of the reasons why I love them so much. Uh, there's another one that is, so Wix only has two, for example. They use Modelist and Print something or other for print supplies. Uh, Shopify is about 20. Uh, and it, again, it depends on what you're selling. So for example, Today, I built a website about nuts and gum and then used Modelist, which doesn't sell food products. It's all Alibaba, which is physical stuff. And so I couldn't actually find nuts and gum. It was a terrible decision on my part at the beginning of the evening. Uh, but I was able to sell other forms of nuts and other forms of gums. So there you go. Uh, does Amazon support drop shipping? <clears throat> so Amazon really is a drop shipping. Like, so what you do is a fulfillment by Amazon. So you would actually just, I mean, you would become the drop shipper. You would buy from AliExpress, for example, have it delivered directly to Amazon. You would be the drop shipper in a way. You're the, the micro distributor and use fulfillment by Amazon where they will actually hold the product for you. So in that case, you would buy a thousand forks, ship them to Facebook by uh, fulfillment. They would hold the forks for you. In a drop shipping model, you don't actually buy multiple forks. You just simply list forks. The original manufacturer has the bucket of forks and they would sell the forks for you. And if they run into forks, the fork that you can actually set the setting so that when they run into forks, it actually comes off your website automatically. And of course, you have to have a reputable drop shipper using reputable manufacturers because you could technically sell a fork that they don't actually have or haven't delivered or is poor quality and you're now managing the relationship for a fork that you sold that isn't a great fork. Uh, 